Today on OC News, the CFA at Cal State Fullerton has joined Cal Poly Pomona's strike for better pay. The lack of snowfall and warmer temperatures has caused difficulties for skiing resorts. Mariachi Titans has given a student a sense of community on campus. All this and more coming up on OC News. This just in. Now in tech news, the first responder on the There's been a lot of collaborative efforts over the years. blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast, Broadcast Journalism students, students at Cal State Fullerton. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. OC News starts right now. Hello and welcome to OC News. I'm Sarah Granillo. And I'm Marissa Lavazari. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students here at Cal State Fullerton. We are responding to breaking news. Only a few hours ago, another deadly campus shooting, this time at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And the latest report out of Las Vegas has three dead, while one remains in critical condition, according to the Las Vegas Police Department. Police said that the suspect is also dead and that there is no remaining threat to students or faculty. The Las Vegas airport is experiencing impacts to their flight schedule and the UNLV men's basketball game has been canceled. Reporter Dia Barrero is live here on campus. She spoke to students about this tragedy as well as the mental health and awareness implications that it has on our community. Dia. With a heavy heart, I'm reporting live here on campus, asking students about today's mass shooting that happened at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I hadn't heard anything about it until right now, actually. I feel like that is something that I worry about because I know it is in the media a lot that there's mass shootings everywhere. And I feel like personally, it's something really scary when you come to a campus where there's 40,000 students and it is an open campus and anybody can come on campus. So I feel like it's something that I really do worry about and it's something that's just really scary when you think about how you come to school for an education and it's something they have to worry about. You have to worry about risking your life when you come to school. I see how there's like there's no fences here, so it is kind of easy for people to come up uh, on the campus and maybe maybe build uh, some sort of border or uh, recruit more people to come and uh, drive around campus. You know, keep an eye on the students. I feel like I would feel scared um, to even come on campus. And typically, I do feel safe on this campus, so I would feel a little bit confused and I don't know how I would handle the situation. I feel like maybe doing like, maybe making the school more secure, for example, like using student cards or IDs to enter the school to make sure that they're actually a student and not a person from outside. I haven't heard about it, no. If this happened on this campus, how how you feel? So I'll feel scared, especially if I was on campus, I'll feel like devastated, scared, terrified if that happened. If they're short on staff, I think they should recruit more um, people, especially college students that want to work. I think that that would be a better opportunity for everybody and more safety. The campus police department has reported being under the staff this past semester. This is why students hope for changes to be made soon. Reporting live from Calister Fullerton and Dia Barrero. Back to you guys. Thanks, Dia. These stories are very troubling for all of us. Another concerning issue here at CSUF is the possibility of a strike by CSU faculty. The California Faculty Association has been protesting on different campuses. Miguel Castaneda has the story. CFA strikes continue throughout the CSU system. We're supporting Pomona. You know, I'm at Cal State Fullerton, so I did. I won the bargaining team, but I did not help organize. I'm a bus captain, yay! <laughs> Members of the CFA of Cal State Fullerton have joined in solidarity with the faculty of Cal Poly Pomona in their ongoing battle for better pay. Okay, we're doing our contract reopener. We're working on our last contract. We had four asks. Uh, we asked for salary, which they responded to at 4% initially and then 5%. Uh, we asked for parental leave. We asked for a semester off for parental leave. They offered us 6%. We got an illegal message to our faculty, staff, and students saying they offered 8%, but uh, no time did they respect that. We also asked for relief from work, overwork, I should say, from workload. Mm -hmm. They ignored that as well. And we also asked for help with safety, which was also ignored. But they did ask to increase parking. Now, 
Now this strike is not just for the faculty alone. Some of the faculty members have explained that they are also pushing for students' rights. As you can see from a sign like this, it reads, faculty working conditions are student learning conditions. And so if students have concerns about it, they should talk to their faculty. Um, ask their faculty what are their plans uh, for, for any given day. And you know that um, uh, classes proceed in lots of different ways all the time. Um, we are no longer, and this is like, if you think about good things that came out of the pandemic, right, we are a lot more flexible. We are a lot more nimble than we were before. There is a possibility no deal is made by the start of the spring semester. If that is the case, could classes really be canceled? I'm going to try not to impact the class and negatively in any way, but I am going to support the union in terms of uh, picketing and things of that nature, but um, hopefully it doesn't come to that. I mean, hopefully. Hopefully it gets resolved before that, but I, I would support the union, and, and if there is no agreement, then that might mean that missing some classes. If you have questions or concerns about your courses next semester, make sure you contact your professors for the latest updates. This is Miguel Casaniela, OC News. The man accused of fatally shooting three homeless men in L.A. last week made a court appearance on Monday. 33-year-old Jared Joseph Powell appeared in court Monday facing multiple crimes including four counts of murder. Police say Powell walked up to the three unhoused men and shot them as they slept alone. Powell is also facing charges for allegedly shooting a man during a robbery in San Dimas. Both the car and firearm used in the robbery are believed to be the same used in the killings of the unhoused men. Powell faces life in prison if convicted and will appear in the Los Angeles Superior Court on January 8th for arraignment. A string of homicides and shootings unfolded across two Texas communities on Tuesday. CNN reporter Laura Aguirre has the latest details and updates. A stunning shooting spree across central Texas left six people dead, three more wounded, and one man now in custody. We strongly believe one suspect is responsible for all of the incidents. It started with the discovery of two bodies in a home near San Antonio early Tuesday. I believe the bodies were relocated to, the, to where they are now. Authorities say the suspect then drove 80 miles northeast to Austin, where a police officer for the Austin Independent School District was shot and wounded. Just over an hour later, a man and a woman were found fatally shot about 12 miles away. Then a male cyclist was shot and injured shortly before 5 p.m. local time. And at another location about two hours after that, a 911 call regarding a burglary in progress. The initial responding officer encountered a male suspect in the backyard of the residence. The male suspect immediately opened fire at the officer. Police say the officer was hit several times as the suspect fled in a vehicle. After his pursuit with officers, the male suspect crashed the vehicle he was operating and was taken into custody. The officer's wounds were not life-threatening, says law enforcement officials, but another two victims were found dead inside the house connected to the burglary call. So far, it's not known why the alleged gunman, named by police Wednesday afternoon as 34-year-old Shane James, targeted his victims. The nature of the relationship, if any, between the victims and the suspect is unknown. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Republican candidates are facing off tonight in Alabama in the fourth presidential debate. The stage is shrinking just weeks ahead of the 2024 presidential election kickoff. Only four Republican presidential candidates qualified for the fourth Republican for the fourth Republican national debate. Former governors Chris Christine and Nikki Haley, alongside current governor Ron DeSantis and entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, will face off in Tuscaloosa to qualify for the debate. Each candidate needed 80,000 unique donors and poll votes above 6%. Former President Donald Trump will not be in attendance as he will be at the fundraiser for his campaign. Coming up on OC News, tomorrow, December 7th, marks National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Plus, get to know the founder of the first ever Mariachi Club at Cal State Fullerton. And despite setbacks and challenges, Disney content creators are following their passion. All this and more coming up on OC News.
Thursday, December 7th is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. It's a day to remember the men and women who gave their lives for our country. On December 7th, 1941, 2,400 service members and civilians lost their lives in the two-hour air raid by Japanese forces on the U.S. naval base in Hawaii. The sneak attack shook Americans' confidence and pulled the country into World War II. Congress designated December 7th as National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day in 1994. This Thursday marks 82 years since the attack happened on Pearl Harbor. After more than 25 years in the police force, campus police Captain Scott Willie has decided to retire next year in order to enjoy the adventure we call life. Reporter Adam Garcia has the story. Growing up, Captain Scott Willie didn't always know that he was going to be a police officer, having interest in music and acting, but he would remind himself of how he grew up around people who served their communities. Adopted by my, uh, my stepfather into the Willie family. I was, a, I was a walker when I was born. I was a Willie uh, about five years old with my mom and my brother. And my stepfather was an LA City firefighter. And so he did that for 30 years. Uh, but we would go to the firehouse and we would spend our Thanksgivings there and, and all that. Um, so I really grew up around that civil servant, uh, you know, kind of mentality and that, that upbringing that to, to, you know, serve the community. Music was and still is a big part of Captain Willie's life, and music was his passion before joining the police force. That side of the family that was really into music, um, so I, I got that bug and um, I started, I was in some plays and musicals when I was younger and I wrote music for some of the plays that we were in and um, just really enjoyed that. I could change those Gray skies to blue if I had you. When reflecting on the retirement announcement of Captain Willie, Sergeant Patrick Lonnie got emotional talking about how Captain Willie has impacted his life. I'm going to miss his motivation behind all that, but mostly um, what I'm going to miss is the individual who he truly is. He's a stand up guy, um, he has a big heart. And, uh, and, and he cares for, for his police officers. He, he, he really does. And I'm getting a little, little teary-eyed right now, thinking that it, and it's still a year uh, to ago, but uh, um, he's really touched not only my uh, professional career, but, but me as, uh, as an individual. For the past 25 years, Captain Willie has dedicated his life to being a public servant and being a pillar of this community here in Cal State Fullerton. Now he's ready to take on a new adventure in life and dedicating himself to his family and hopefully one day being a grandfather. Super excited for him to retire. I want him to go. I know he's been talking about like kayaking. He's been getting into pickleball. You know, he wants to go do stuff on a lake. Like I'm all for that. I love that stuff. Uh, my sister is having a baby soon. So him being there for, for, for her and my family is going to be really cool. So I couldn't be happier. For him. That and my retirement, it's all about family. Uh, my daughter just got married, so there's a possibility that she'll have a child sometime soon, and I'll be able to watch watch the baby um, if I'm not as I'm not working. So um, that's another big goal. So pretty much that guides everything that I do is family. This is Adam Garcia with OC News. Back to you guys in the studio. The holiday season is right around the corner, but temperatures haven't really shown it. Weather reporter Marcus Olvea is here to tell us what the weather is, what we have to expect for the weather as the semester winds down. Marcus? Thank you very much, Sarah. We are currently in the middle of winter. It is time for sweather weather. But reports have indicated that it's the hottest year in 2023, so it might not be sweater weather. And we're exactly 19 days away from my favorite holiday in December and that's Christmas, and it's on a Monday this year. Let's go over the current temps. Weather conditions for today in Fullerton will be sunny during the day with a high near 75. Southwest wind around eight miles per hour. Humidity is at 63%, and today's sunrise will be at 6.42 a.m., and sunset will be at 4.42. Next, let's go over the Fullerton five-day forecast. Thursday, the temperatures will peak as high as 69 with mostly cloudy skies. 
and the lows will be in the high 40s during the night. On Friday, the weather stays static with highs reaching up to 69 and the only difference is those sunny skies making an, making a appearance. During the night, the lows will dip into the 40s. Plan to go enjoy our California beaches because Saturday we'll have the temperatures in the 70s with lows in the 50s with sunny skies. And on Sunday, expect it to warm up by a couple degrees to highs that climb to 76 degrees. The temperature will stay cold with lows in the 50s. And for our national news, our friends to the north, specifically in Seattle, are getting pounded by rain, resulting in preliminary flood stage records last Tuesday afternoon. And be careful when crossing large amounts of water on the road due to potholes. And in Washington state, the heavy rain caused rivers to overflow that collapsed the side of a highway. And that's all the weather I have for you. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Marcus. We're not quite done with the weather news. Less snow is falling globally as the earth continues to warm, which is having negative effects on ski resorts. The United States is experiencing milder winters by around 2.3 degrees, according to meteorologist Bob Henson. This is causing less snow to fall not only in the Sierra Nevada mountains, but around the globe. As winters warm, ski resorts that were on the fringe of snowmaking conditions are closing because they can't provide enough snow to ski on. Artificial snowmaking creates a snowpack, but has a significant impact on the environment. Paulina Herrera, best known as Paulina Clothing, is a recognized artist from Central California. Reporter Dia Barrero has her story. Paulina Herrera is a Mexican-American Dia de los Muertos makeup artist and a fashion designer from California. Her passion comes from her Mexican family so roots. So my passion for Dia de los Muertos starts with my family roots. Uh, my dad was very passionate about our culture. And even though I was born here in the United States, I feel like that I'm very strongly connected with my roots. And celebrating my family lineage, my Mexican history, and the beautiful culture that Dia de los Muertos embodies. Because of her talent, she has so many clients that wish to become a Katrina at least one time in their life. It is my first time. I've always wanted to do it. Um, when I saw Paulina's uh, work, I was mesmerized, loved it. And I said, this is it. I didn't even bother checking Prize, anything, nothing. I saw her work and I fell in love with it. Lily Contreras, another of Paulina's clients, mentioned that if she was going to do something like this, she would do it with someone that has passion for it. Is that your purse? Well, I, I've seen her work. It's amazing. She has experience and I've seen it with a family and friends and actually like in Hongwon and Isle and Oaxaca. Her, she has passion for it. And I thought if I, I'm going to do something like this, might as well with somebody uh, that has the passion. Paulina Herrera is not only a Dia de los Muertos maker artist, she's also a fashion designer with 18 years of experience. Her job is only a reflection of her love for her family and her country, Mexico. Paulina has been able to show her work in many parts of the world, but the one that will make her come back is Oaxaca, Mexico. From all the places that I have visited, I think the one that stands out the most in my mind is Oaxaca. Why? It was just a totally different feeling being there, being celebrating it in the cemetery, being there with the people. One of her advices for anyone who wishes to become a makeup artist or a fashion designer is to find their passion and a community that supports your talent. This is Dia Barrero for Aussie News. We'll be going to a final commercial break, but right after a great Oak High School baseball player shines in the senior spotlight. Plus, the story of a visionary leader and founder who wanted to take mariachi performance out of customary locations. And the latest action and news in sports and entertainment, coming up next on OC News. You'll be the first, Mija. I 
got in. Dad, I got in. You should know this one. Who knows it? So how's it going in school? Finish those before you go. Management function that seeks to develop mutually beneficial relationships with all of our audience. Hey, do you know what this word means? Empowerment? Authority or power given to someone to do something. E E M M P O W E R M E N T T Empowerment. Five point six percent of high school baseball players will go on to play college baseball. Only 05 percent of all high school baseball players will play professionally. Reporter Nathan Glendinning got to meet a high school baseball player that has a chance to do both. In his final season at Great Oak High School, the six foot three, hundred and ninety pound catcher Dylan Fien has one goal in mind. Right now, my biggest goal, obviously, for my high school team is winning a league championship. Um, that's been a goal forever. Uh, the past couple of years, I came short, which is unfortunate, but I know we have a good, good squad this year um, to be able to overcome the good teams in our league and end up winning league. And then on top of that, if we can do it, uh, end up winning a CIF championship. So, Fiend led the team with 38 hits, a 487 batting average, and a 551 slugging percentage last season. He is ranked as the second best catcher in the state of California for the 2024 class. The switch hitting catcher likes to lead by example. Um, I don't, for me, I don't like slacking off whatsoever with whatever I do. And I like if I'm working with people, whether that's on the field or off the field, I like everyone to have the same mindset that I do and kind of follow my lead and get things done the way that it's supposed to be done. He is committed to play at UCLA, but that can all change if one of the 30 MLB teams calls his name next July. To be drafted to the MLB out of high school would just mean the world to me. Obviously, it's been my dream since I was a kid to become a professional baseball player. And just to kickstart kick start that baseball career off really would just be such a blessing to me. And if it were to happen, then I'd be the most thankful person ever. Either whether he goes college route or goes the pro route right out of high school, this time next year, he's just going to be living a dream life for a kid one way or another. Sharing the spotlight is easier said than done, but Fien embraces sharing the field with his brother. And obviously, he's a great player. I love sharing the field with him. Um, we get to talk about baseball a lot. We get to talk about how the games went, how practices went, and just baseball in general. So it's definitely a blessing and something that I've uh, loved to do um, for the past three, four years. It's awesome. You know, he's great player, probably the best on the team. So it's just great to be surrounded and pushed by your own brother who is striving to be great as well as trying to follow in his footsteps and be great as well. Dylan and his brother will look to lead the Wolfpack to a Southwestern League title and a deep run into the playoffs. For OC News, I'm Nathan Glendening. Speaking of sports, we have Joshua Potts in the studio with the latest action in sports. Take it away, Joshua. Thanks so much, Sarah. Before we get to the Lake Show, let's stick around that high school game real quick. Let's talk about Orange County's very own. Last Saturday, five Orange County high schools were represented at Nike Cross Nationals. Every year, Nike brings the best high school athletes to compete in Portland, Oregon. San Clemente was the top OC boys team finishing eighth place. Dana Hills also represented the OC finishing in 10th. On the girls' side, Jay Sarah of San Juan Capistrano was the second fastest Californian team in 13th. Also, Huntington Beach High School was represented with super freshman Sydney Rubio. But junior Holly Barker stole the show as the second fastest Californian and finishing 12th place overall. Stay tuned because this Saturday, the Foot Locker Cross Country Championship is going down in San Diego. 
I'm gonna be down there watching Malise Jambi Inway. She's repping Orange County out of Corona Del Mar High School. Malise is looking for a big championship win this week, just like the Lakers were looking for one last night in the end season tournament. It was Lakers versus the Suns quarterfinals in season term tournament. And that right there is Kevin Durant down for three, bringing the Suns back within one point going into the fourth quarter. And you know, it's playoff atmosphere, big time championship, grown man strength by LeBron James. And he really took over. He played 40 minutes in this game more than anybody else on the court. He's 38. The guy's playing like he's 29. Let's really talk about it right here. He's going to pull up for three. He's going to look down at the hands shoot it from three and a splash like always a takeover game from LeBron James and the Suns they really did battle but it's the classic LeBron effect this is what he's been doing for years and the Lakers go on to win it the Lakers will play tomorrow night at 6 p.m. against the New Orleans Pelicans in Las Vegas a win guarantees them a spot in the first ever season in season tournament championship game I'll be seated tomorrow to hoping witness greatness once again by LeBron James. That's all for me. Let's go back to y'all at the table. Thank you, Joshua. Jasmine Bulgarian, Bulgarin, a current CSUF student, formed the first ever mariachi group on campus. The goal was to inspire others through their music and to bring Latinx culture to students. Reporter John Rodriguez has the story. Jasmine Bulgarin is the founder and president of Mariachi Titans. Growing up, she was a part of many mariachi groups from her hometown. As she likes to put it, music has always been a big part of her culture. Since I transferred, I was just looking for organizations and clubs and other uh, places to find a community, to find that place I can call home and just connect with other people. And I was playing mariachi my whole life growing up. So I thought, why not? Why not start mariachi and mariachi titans here at Cal State Fullerton? I guess what really pushed me and encouraged me was uh, a class I took here with uh, Professor Gradilla just encouraged me and um, it really did push me to start it. Here on campus, the representation of Hispanic and Latino culture is not fully represented. Professor Gradilla is able to share his thoughts as he is not only a former professor for Jasmine, but also her mentor. And I asked the question, I said, well, who would, what would you bring? What's missing from your identity that you would want to bring something? And Jasmine rose her, rose her hand and said, uh, I'm a mariachi and I would like to see mariachi on campus. And then right next to her was another student who said she and her family were mariachis. I think he definitely connected me with the right people. Um, I, he encouraged me to reach out. He uh, guided me to who to reach out to. Students of color can't see themselves anywhere physically on campus. And, and look at our public art on campus. We have a broken man and a sinking ship on campus. Where do students of color see themselves? Being part of this club, you feel like you have something to look forward to other than school. People do a lot of talking. Talking is real easy, but doing the work, Jasmine did the work. She is a fierce leader because she pushes for these changes, for these um, collaborations. And I, we all support her and we are inspired by her. So she keeps the group going and we want to emulate that. And it makes us work a little harder. <laughs> really, I guess I would tell myself just to keep going, not to take those breaks, just to keep pushing to get better because it'll be, it'll be worth it in the end. Um, and the fact that she did it within a semester is amazing and maybe inspire people not to feel that they don't belong. Since forming the group, the Marachi Titans have been performing at many school events and even events outside school. For OC News, I'm John T. Rodriguez. Let's catch up on entertainment news with Samuel Enriquez, who has the latest. Let's hear it, Sam. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. We have a lot of news in the entertainment world, so let's jump right into it. TV producer Norman Lear has passed away Tuesday in his home in Los Angeles, his family announced. He was 101. Lear was the man behind hit TV shows like The Jeffersons, Sanford and Son, and All in the Family. Over his career, Lear earned six Emmy Awards, a National Medal of Arts, and a Peabody Lifetime Award, and much more. In 2020, Lear won an Emmy as an executive producer for a live revival of All in the Family and Good Times at the Age of 98. 
It continues to hold the record of the oldest Emmy nominee and winner. In lighter news, gaming fans can rejoice because Rockstar has finally released its trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6, the next installment of the popular and successful Grand Theft Auto franchise. As of today, the trailer has already amassed 112 million views. The trailer was initially supposed to be released Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, but a leak forced Rockstar to release it a few hours earlier. GTA 6 will be the first game in the franchise to feature a female lead. The game is set to release in 2025. Taylor Swift's reign continues. Time Magazine has named Taylor Swift as its Person of the Year. Her era's tour gained over $2.2 billion in ticket sales in North America alone. Plus, Swift's concert film Taylor Swift's Eras Tour brought in $96 million at the box office. Swift is the first figure in the category of arts to win the award, beating out eight other finalists including Sam Altman, The Hollywood Strikers, Barbie, and Jerome Powell. StubHub also revealed that her Eras Tour was the biggest tour in the website's history. Whether you're a fan or not, this year has been all Taylor Swift. And you know what? The, the Bad Blood song with uh, Kendrick Lamar, is, it's kind of my jam. Um, I'm interested to know, um, do you guys have a favorite Taylor Swift song? You know, Sam, I don't consider myself the Swifty, but I've definitely listened to my fair share of Taylor Swift. First song that comes to mind is our song, It's Nostalgic. How about you, Sarah? Well, being that it's December, of course I have to say Back to December is one of my favorite old Taylor Swift songs. I definitely like all of her originals. Yeah, we love Taylor Swift here at Cal State Fullerton. Macaulay Culkin finally got his star on the Walk of Fame. Last Friday, the kid of the 90s finally officially got his star on the Walk of Fame, accompanied by former co-star Catherine O'Hara and his wife, Brenda Song. The 43-year-old Home Alone star was emotional and seen wiping away tears. Listening to the speech given by his former on-screen mom, O'Hara spoke about how much Culkin has grown and his evolution in the 33 years since filming both Home Alone films in the 90s. She also added the franchise is and always will be a beloved global sensation. Culkin thanked his former co-star and hugged before concluding with an iconic line from Home Alone saying, quote, I just want to say Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. If you have ever seen a Disneyland post online, you have seen a Disney content creator. Let's take a look at what these creators do on a daily basis and what it means to them to create this content. Conlin McKenzie has more on the story. I'm here to shed some light on the extraordinary world of Disney content creators. Behind those magical posts and enchanting videos lies a tale of creativity, dedication, and the occasional battle with the crowds at the happiest place on earth. Disney content creators aren't the only ones telling the stories, they're living them as well. Me in general, it just means that I get to share my experiences with uh, the following that I have. It might not be big, but it's big enough for me to keep doing what I'm doing. A lot of what I do is I review food, I review drinks, and uh, most of the time some merchandise every now and then whenever it comes out. Um, but uh, a lot of the times I find myself coming to Disney uh, for the nostalgia and uh, just to meet friends. I started Beastly Appetite, or I started my Disney journey basically just to meet friends you know I can come here have some food meet some friends in line uh, and then see what else happens it means the world to me being in the position that I am right now because I can use my platform to do some good uh, spread some good kind of knowledge of the Disney parks and not only that but Disney in general works with a lot of small companies uh, a lot of small businesses in general so if i can highlight those small businesses uh it means the world to me whenever somebody goes to that actual business and says i came here because of beastly appetite that's like the best thing in the world these digital content creators are like imagineers creating amazing stories from the digital world it's not always about the rides or the characters or even the atmosphere here at disneyland sometimes it's about the content creators creating the magic behind the lens it does have its perks though, from characters recognizing you to even Disney reposting your videos. Sometimes it has its challenges, trying to battle between the magic and the authenticity of your video. It's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I like making content here. There's obviously no shortage of it. I, can, I love covering the food, uh, the events going on, and some of the like, new characters that are coming out. It's so much fun. I love meeting people here that watch my content. They're all extremely sweet and just knowing 
that my content is reaching uh, quite a few people is one of the coolest feelings ever. Um, I never thought in a million years that I would be making videos that would reach anybody. So it's, it's just a really cool feeling. I'm having a lot of fun. So the next time you scroll past a magical post, remember, behind the scenes, there's a creative force turning dreams into a digital reality. Reporting live from Disneyland, I'm Colin McKenzie with OC News. That's all we have for you tonight. We want to thank you for joining us this evening for our last 4.30 show of OC News for the fall semester. We will resume in the spring semester at the end of January. We also want to give a big thank you to our production crew from our executive producer to all of our reporters. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Titan TV CSUF. Our final show comes to you in just a few minutes. Have a great evening.